Indifference to the persecution of others always has tragic consequences. These insightful words spoken by Werner Gellert, a founder of the New Mexico Holocaust and Intolerance Museum, have inspired many to take up his cause. 85 years ago, he witnessed the capacity of mankind's cruelty. He saw a need to teach not only the lessons of the Holocaust, but also the histories of other genocides and acts of intolerance. Educating youth was paramount to Werner, and so we continue to use lessons and personal stories of the Holocaust and other genocides and social injustices to inspire communities of upstanders. Critical thinking and personal responsibility are stressed. Students go away understanding how name-calling and targeting some as others can escalate to genocide. The impact on students is profound. With anti-Semitism, racism, homophobia, and abuse of other marginalized groups on the rise, and few Holocaust survivors remaining, we are compelled to preserve these histories. We are compelled to create a place where truth is paramount, where the people of New Mexico, especially our youth, will see themselves, will be able to relate to the stories we tell. Hitler came in as this very charismatic person, motivated people and had the answer, you know, and the answer was to get rid of these horrible people, the Jews, the gypsies, all the people that they ultimately killed. There are many parallels among these stories that unfortunately connect one tragedy to another. Even though the stories were different tribe to tribe, the, 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 uh, the history was the same. Um, you know, we talked about uh, the boarding schools, and that was certainly one of the most horrific. But there were whole tribes in states, California and Texas, um, and in the Dakotas where we were hunted. There wasn't a recognition that we were fully human and a, a real effort to make sure that they fit, fit the mold of what they wanted or saw Native people to be, and that was less than. When Pearl Harbor was attacked by the Japanese in Honolulu, on that very day, within hours, the U.S. government, the FBI, were mobilized. Altogether, along the West Coast, 125,000 Japanese Americans, two-thirds of them citizens, as I was, were incarcerated in ten, 10 different camps. And they were all similar, barbed wire, gun towers, and people incarcerated. Men like my dad, who were singled out and interrogated, you know, no charges, no explanation even. Your crime was you were Japanese. Just when we think society is moving forward, organized efforts arise as barriers to a more diverse and equitable society. Um, I lost my job at that time for being trans, for transitioning. Transgender women of color in Albuquerque are not able to finish high school because of the way they were treated by the teachers or the administrators, were often put out of their homes from, by their families of origin, even in some cases as young as 13. In the bank, I would have meetings with people and people would look at me and not anticipate that I was the president. They figured that the guy sitting next to me was. In a lot of cases, people not expecting you to be up to the same level that they are. History teaches us lessons for the future. We don't want to go back to slavery. We don't want to go back to repressing other communities. We want to treat everybody as equals because I think that's how our community will thrive. I'm 60 years old. I'm still fighting those barriers. I've been dealing with walls all my life. Until you understand your connection to this country, you don't feel like you belong because those walls are in place. We need to start standing up. We're not trying to use the past to point fingers. We want people not to forget the past, but we want to take those lessons to make us stronger and to unite us. We don't want to learn history to divide us. We want to be able to go to a place, see where we came from, how we got here, and then that makes it important enough for us to get involved and change how we move forward. That needs to happen.